Hi, hello, and welcome again to another episode of Natural Juan. Today we will be discussing the tabletop RPG known as Pathfinder, one of Dungeons & Dragons' biggest competitors out there. However, before that, I would like to make a quick shout out to all of my old students, Perviage Gon Espiritu, Madox Pasamonte, Leonardo Eugenio III, Nathaniel Esposo, Kyle Artagame, Joriel Roca IV, Rodel Paule, Nika Janil Deperio, Kobe Averhart, Sendrix Castro, and Ralph Castillo. I never got a chance to prepare a game of Pathfinder for you guys, but maybe with the help of a virtual tabletop like Fantasy Grounds or Roll20, we can put something together. Anyway, I hope you kids are doing okay and staying safe during this pandemic. There are a lot of tabletop role-playing games out there. You got the possibly most well-known Dungeons & Dragons, the magic meets technology world of Shadowrun, and the creepy awesome adventures of Chronicles of Darkness. There are countless others, but mentioning them here now would probably be redundant, but I'll probably detail them later in a future video. However, just recently, a new competitor has arrived on the scene and is already making big waves in the tabletop role-playing community. This is none other than Pathfinder, created by Paizo who are also known for making the science fantasy epic Starfinder. Paizo was once part of the company responsible for bringing about Dungeons & Dragons 3.5, but have since gone their own way. The current situation between Paizo and Wizards of the Coast the creators of Dungeons & Dragons is quite complicated, and I will not be discussing it here. Anyway, Pathfinder is very similar to Dungeons & Dragons 3.5 as it was created in response to the negative reaction to Dungeons & Dragons 4th edition. It's no surprise then that Pathfinder has many rules and concepts that are almost identical to that of Dungeons & Dragons. From stout and industrious dwarves, proud and snobbish elves, brutal and barbaric orcs, to innumerable and cantankerous goblins. Pathfinder already has a second edition, which has been launched with its main books now available online. But, right now, I'll just be discussing the first edition. Pathfinder takes place in the world of Galarian, a world similar to our own, but populated by many different intelligent species and a place where magic plays an important part in society. Note also that unlike Dungeons & Dragons, which has many different settings like with the steampunk world of Eberron and Ravenloft, which is filled with gothic horrors, Pathfinder has everything all in one world. This is so that players don't need to use a completely different setting for a game. If you want to play a game set in a western, like Deadlands, you can play in the Mono Waste. If you want to play a dark and dreary game with a lot of horror elements, you can check out the Principality of Ustalov. If you want to adventure in a newfound land filled with undiscovered wonders, you can visit the distant lands of Aslant. If you want a more Asian-inspired game with ninjas, samurai, and geisha, there's the faraway land of Tiansha. And if you want a simple game of brutalizing and slaughtering demons, there's the vast land of Sarkoris, which is now simply called the World Wound, which is ripe for the taking. To play Pathfinder, you need, at the minimum, the core rulebook, pen and paper to record your adventures, and a set of dice that includes four-sided dice, the all too familiar six-sided dice, eight-sided dice, ten-sided dice, twelve-sided dice, and most importantly, twenty-sided dice. You begin the game by creating a character using the rules given by the core rulebook. One player must also be the game master who is in charge of running the game, creating and controlling background characters and enemies, and creating challenges for the other players. You can choose to make characters strong, tough, fast, clever, wise, or attractive, and just about anything else in between. There are also the iconic characters like Valeros the Fighter, Freya the Witch, Amiri the Barbarian, which are available on the Paizo website that are ready for play 
for those who can't be bothered to create a character. Once ready, a game master or GM can create an adventure. Use one of the many adventures presented by Paizo or use an existing adventure as inspiration for an original game. The game is mainly played with a d20 or 20-sided dice to determine the outcome of various challenges and actions. For example, Valeros the fighter uses his bow to attack a troll. Valeros rolls his d20 resulting in a 16 and then adds his plus 3 bonus to it, making it 19. Since it is higher than the troll's AC or armor class which is 16, this means that Valeros has scored a direct hit and now rolls his damage dice which is a d6 that results in a 5. So 5 is subtracted from the troll's HP or hit points. So from 63, it now has 58 hit points. That said, Valero still has a lot of hit points to work through until he can kill the troll. There's also the fact that the same troll will be making its counterattack after this and Valero's AC of 17 better hold up against the troll's attack bonus of plus 8. So, unless any of his allies like Sayoni the Sorceress or Ezrin the Wizard shows up to help, Valeros is pretty much screwed. For a non-combat example, we can have Damiel the Alchemist concoct a potion that will help him sleep at night as he is an insomniac. Damiel has a bonus craft skill of plus 8 and must roll against a difficulty class of 12. So, if Damiel were to roll a high number such as 16, resulting in a 24, he would succeed in his task and get some good, uninterrupted sleep for the rest of the night. Unfortunately, Damiel instead rolls a 1, which is the worst roll any player can get, meaning that the potion he has concocted has made it even harder for him to sleep. There are many other books aside from the core rulebook, including the setting guide which serves as a kind of atlas for the world of Galarian, the many adventure guides, the character creation guides for meticulous players who keep a close eye on how they make characters, and many, many others. As a matter of fact, I have actually lost count of the supplemental books that have been written for Pathfinder, with some being written by Paizo or by third parties who have a keen interest in the game. And that's just the first edition of the game. The books for the second edition of the game are available now, but... And that's just for the first edition of the game. This game is really diverse. That much I can say. There are rules for just about anything and everything, and that's just the core books. I'm not even talking about the game's campaign and supplementary books that adds everything, from how cold weather negatively affects the health of player characters to the culture and customs of scorpion people. There are also systems for just about any and all types of settings mentioned above, from the prehistoric lands of the realm of the mammoth lords, which reminds me a little too much of the Batanes region of the Philippines, and Numeria with its Star Wars level of technology. The Philippines even receives a fantasy counterpart in the form of Minata, and is often plagued by Aswang and other monsters of Philippine folklore. The art, I would say, is also really cool with detailed depictions of monsters from the lowly goblins, which are this game's equivalent to cannon fodder, to the mighty and calamitous Ravener, which are very similar to Dungeons & Dragons' Dracoliches. The character art is also quite impressive in depicting heroic characters like Sela the Paladin, and the Red Raven whose tactics and appearance give him an uncanny resemblance to Batman of all things. As for villains like Tarbafon the Whispering Tyrant and Nocticula the Demon Queen, their images alone evoke the idea of Final Boss which, when paired with the difficulty of actually defeating them, give things a truly epic feel. While Celtiel the Magus and Elaine the Cavalier are in traditional heroes per se, they are nonetheless depicted as quite heroic in their own right in the game's art. That said, the company did receive a bit of backlash due to the suggestive depiction of female characters in various books and promotional art. As for game mechanics, well, okay, let's get this straight. I am very math dumb. That means I already have trouble just making simple calculations in my head. 
Pathfinder has also been called Mathfinder in some circles due to the large number of calculations you will have to make in any given game. Examples include having to add your bonuses to a given attack from background bonuses, like where your character came from and where they grew up in, to circumstance bonuses, like if your character ate or slept on the previous night, and many more. There's also the fact that you need to be really good at bookkeeping to remember all the little things that apply to different situations, such as your character might not be able to see well in dim lighting, resulting in a minus 2 penalty or damage reduction which subtracts from your overall attack damage. The list goes on. So while I certainly appreciate this game and its content, the math involved in running this game has proven to be a challenge to me on many occasions. Anyway, that's it for this introduction and overview of Pathfinder 1st Edition. We will be discussing more about it in later videos from its Game Mastering Guide, Player's Guide to its many adventure paths in later episodes. So see you all next time and thank you for taking the time to watch another episode of Natural Juan. Anyway, if you like this video, please feel free to like and share it with your friends. And if you want more content like this, you can subscribe to my channel and hit that bell for more tabletop roleplaying madness. So this is Natural Juan, wishing you all a good one and see you all in the next video.